always wanted to be in the movies. I was almost a star. Almost. Then something happened that took my dream away. it was romantic. If you think I was gonna let some guy run off with my girl while I fight a bunch of crowds, you must be dizzy. Well, every gal wants a guy that's gonna sacrifice himself for her. It's romantic. You see, that's the problem. Bogart used to play the tough guy. Now he just plays the sad. Well, you're my tough guy. Hey, what are you doing in here? I'm talking to you. Get out of here. Go on. Go. People gotta learn their place. Don't look now, but I think I see Mona Lane sitting over there in a booth drinking a milkshake. Wait. I said don't look. <laughs> I don't want you to embarrass me. And I think I see Jimmy Stance over there with her. I read that there's two an item. <laughs> I guess it's true. Movie stars are people just like us. They gotta put their pants on one leg at a time, just like me. That's how things went down at the Moonlight Cafe the night Mona Lane got kidnapped by a gang of Negroes. Or at least that's how the newspapers told it. But we got plenty of time to get to that. This story is as much about me as it is about her. As a kid, I can still remember going to the pictures watching gangsters and cowboys on the big screen. I wanted to be up there, bigger than everyone bigger than life on top of the world. I always like pretending to be other people. That's me, Archie Glass, just a few months from Hobo on my way from Georgia. It wasn't long before I found myself on Central Ave, the center of Negro life in Los Angeles. I fell in love with Los Angeles that night. I started busting tables, then worked my way up the doorman at the Dunbar Club, which was the hottest spot in South LA. Every night was like a party you never knew who would walk in. Leroy Tucker was a black man from Compton who had Indian in him from his mama's side. It was enough for him to pass as Mexican and get work as an outlaw bandit in Westerns. Big Nadine Lomax worked a lot. Whenever the studios needed someone to play a maid, they called Nadine. She played maids in so many pictures they gave her an Oscar for it. These people, no one cared about them in Hollywood. They were overlooked, or they were just a butt of jokes. But down on Central Ave, they were treated like stars. There was magic in every gesture they made. Every smile was a window into a new kind of freedom. And the biggest of them all, Ennis Matthews. They called him the Brown Clown. He had a series of short films where he played America's favorite Negro clown. Ennis always dressed sharp and smoked these fancy cigars from Cuba. I looked up to him, wanted to be just like him. What's your name, kid? Archie. Archie Glass. Well, Archie Glass, you look like a man that wants to be a doorman all his life. I want to be like you. I want to be in the pictures. I got a hot tip for you if you want it. Uh, sure, I mean, yes. 
Go down to Central Casting. They got a new Negro office open. Tell them I sent you. They're looking to put color folks in movies. Thank you, thank you. I just need one break, mister. One chance to do something big in this world. If you give me that chance, I promise you, I promise you, you won't be sorry. Wait, is that a gun? Why are you pointing a gun at me? Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Look at me, mom. I made it, top of the world. Are you gonna keep playing gangster in that mirror? Or are you gonna come over here and keep me warm? <laughs> the first time I saw Sandra standing outside the Dunbar Hotel, she was like a peacock strutting down the street. She sang four nights a week at the Foxtrot Cafe. I'm not sure what was sweeter, her voice on stage or her kisses in bed. That's real fine, baby. You should know how to make a fella feel good. <laughs> you a good sweet talker. I'm a good actor. I mean, I'm a doorman right now, but I'm gonna be in the picture soon. I can't believe I have them paired with an actor. <laughs> My mama would whoop me good. <laughs> What's wrong with being an actor? Nothing. If you Clark Gable or Betty Davis. Then you could be a pirate or a princess or even a cowboy to come and save the day. But if you are black, the movies is just like real life. You just a maid or somebody's go fetch boy. I know it ain't a lot of work for an Negro man, but it's gonna change and when it does, I want to be the first. You're going to be waiting a long time for that. Not for too long. I got me an audition at Victory Studio. They're looking for Negro actors. Soon you're going to see my name up there with Cackney. Archie Glass, the greatest American actor alive. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. What's your name? Glass, sir. Archie Glass. How'd you hear about this job? Well, I met in a bar that y'all was looking for black folks, so I figured I'd fit the description and came on over. So here's the skinny, okay? The studio wants to start using Negro folk instead of white actors who are dressed up as Negroes in makeup. Now, a lot of good white actors have lost their jobs because of it. But what the studio wants, the studio gets. All right? Turn to your right. Look up. The other side. Uh, OK. You look black enough to me to be a real Negro. I'm a man, sir, and an actor. Not a hothead, are you? No, sir. I don't need any hotheads. Yeah? OK. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, you ever been in front of the camera before? Have you ever acted? A little, sir. One or two church plays. Well, I've seen eight other guys just like you today. What makes you different than them? When I was a little young pup, I got myself in some trouble. Wind up in jail. I was in there with grown men. And I wanted to cry every day. I was afraid. But I couldn't let them see that. So I guess, sir, I can say I've been acting my whole life. Yeah, well, you're not going to be doing any Shakespeare, all right? Just a line or two here and there. Keep the story moving around. Keep the audience laughing. Got it? Yes, sir. You know how to read? Yes, sir. All right, read this. When you're ready. All the world is a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and an entrance. And one man plays many parts. Not bad for a color. I mean, you got to hear the guys coming here. I don't understand a damn thing they're saying. Okay. Take this slip down to wardrobe. They're gonna get you fitted for a porter uniform. And then I want you to come back here tomorrow, stage seven at 6.30 a.m. Got it? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it. Oh, I know. Go. Next. I haven't seen you at the club in a week. Oh, I've been around. Donnie, this is Archie Glass. Like I said, where have you been? I thought we had a good time the last time we went out. Who is this clown? Keep your cool, nigga. This is a nice place for nice folks. <laughs> it's always my pleasure. <laughs> So who is that? That's Donny Albrecht. He leads the orchestra that I used to sing in. He's been wanting me to get back with the band. I think he wants more than that. We were together once. Before you came along. So tell me, how did you get the part? What did you do to beat out all those other guys that were better than you? I just told that fat cat casting director what he wanted to hear. And what was that? A sob story about having to pretend to be other people in order to survive when I was young. It wasn't true? Or it was. You awfully good at play acting. But sometimes I wonder, who is the real Archie Glass. Hey. I see somebody at the bar I know. I'll be right back, baby. Hey, Ennis. Hey, I owe you a drink. The tip you gave me really paid off. I'm in a movie now. This is a small part, but it's a start. And I owe it all to you. Congratulations. What's your name again? Archie Glass. To Archie Glass. The greatest actor on Central Avenue.
Come on, Ennis. We gotta go do that thing. All right, uh, camera rolling. Sound speeding. Actor ready. Okay, now listen. All you need to say is, uh, I don't know, boss. I think this place is haunted, okay? And action. I don't know, boss. I think this place is haunted. Cut. All right, I think that was, uh, that was swell. Okay, uh, let's try another one. Uh, this time I want you to say, um, I think this place is haunted and I'm afraid of ghosts. Action. I think this place is haunted and I'm afraid of ghosts. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, that was great. Um, now try this one on. Um, I was afraid of ghosts. I think I might get so scared I may just turn white. <laughs> Give it all you got, all right? And action. I was afraid of ghosts. I get so scared. I think I may just turn this white. <laughs> and cut. Good, good, good. All right, all right. They definitely brought us the right boy for the job. You know, this is the first time not using a, a white man with blackface. I think I like using a real Negro. All right, great. Uh, next scene, okay. Tell me your favorite song. <laughs> what do you think you're doing there, boy? Get away from that gal. I ain't done nothing, sir. I just met the girl was just right here sharing a laugh. I saw you. I was just sharing a piece of fruit. Call me a liar, boy. <laughs> Punching a white man would get you hung in the South. And though I was far from home, if you stepped out of line in Hollywood, there would be somebody to put you back in place. Lester McCoy, the singer who liked dark rum and white gals until he was found in bed with a producer's wife. Three days later, he was washed up on the beach with his throat cut. Then you had Lenore Carroll, who was about to marry leading man Danny Farrow until he discovered his bride to be was half black and crushed her skull with a golf club in their living room. The judge let him go on a technicality. But I was lucky. All they did was give me a beating and throw me off the lot. I had been blacklisted. Mister, you got a light? Look like somebody done stole your lunch. Something like that. How about you buy sugar a drink? And I'll help you forget all about it.
This road you're going down is not an easy one. You have to show the world that you are a man and that you have the humanity that can mirror all men. That is your job as an actor. You desire, you sacrifice, you love, you hate, you hurt, you bleed, you live, you die. Mr. Glass, would you like to share with the class today? We're all just here wasting our time. And you know it. They don't care about who we are. Mr. Glass, don't leave. It's hard for a man. I thought you was gonna be a big movie star one day. What happened? Got tired of playing the butler? I'll tell you what, though. Everything you hear ain't true. They talking about that girl Mona going to Mexico. She ain't in no Mexico. She got in trouble messing with them, uh, messing with them bad boys down on Central. If she kidnapped, I'll eat my shoe. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Go back, go back. What did you just say? I'll eat my shoe. No. About the actress. That girl ain't in no Mexico. She got in the fix. With some fellas I used to know. T. Glass. You know who I am? You're Jack Wingate, head of Victory Studios. I got something you want. Something you're looking for. I told you, some sort of nut job. Let me bust him up some more and I'll go throw him down a hole in the desert. Do that? You'll never find Mona Lane. And what do you know about Mona Lane? I know she's not down in Mexico getting married. The town talks. It's not just gossip. And you're hiding it from the press. 
But once word get out, everybody's gonna know. And what is it that you want? I'm an actor. Or at least I was until I got blacklisted. I need you to take me off the blacklist so I can work again, or better yet, put me in one of your pictures. Why would I want to do that? I could find Mona Lane for you. Why the hell would I need you when I have my own security staff? Where you need to go, this big ugly white man is gonna stick out like a sore thumb. And where is it that I need to go? Down in South Los Angeles, a place I'm pretty sure you've never been. Can you read? Yes, sir, I can read. This was left on my doorstep last evening. If you are reading this, you already know that Mona Lane is missing. We will kill her if we don't get $10,000 by the day after tomorrow. Leave the money in a brown paper bag at the bus stop at Central in Jefferson. Do not delay in payment if you want to see her alive again. <clears throat> it seems that Miss Lane got herself into trouble for engaging jazz clubs. Miss Lane likes a certain kind of company. <laughs> I don't follow. She likes Negro men. Now the studio has invested a lot of resources and money into the image of Mona Lane. She's one of our up and rising stars. I can't risk her image to be tarnished by people thinking that she's a nigger lover. You follow me now, Mr. Glass? Yeah, I guess I do. If you can do what you say, I'll reward you. I'll take you off that blacklist and I'll put you in one of my films. Now you call when you find her, and O'Neill here will go and fetch her before some rogue reporter with an itch to make a name for himself can write about it. Can I trust your word? <sighs> That's a funny thing to ask a man. Yes, you can trust me. Then you have a deal. Just one thing. Yeah, what's that? Why don't you just pay the kidnappers? I'm pretty sure you can afford it, and you got plenty to spare. Let me tell you something. I am not about to let some hoodlum gang of Negroes think that they can boss me around. They won't get a wooden nickel out of me. Are you follow me now, Mr. Glass? Yeah, I guess I do. Glass, you find the girl, I'll deal with the coked up coons. If you're so bad, why don't you just find her yourself? Just because the boss made you a promise doesn't mean I won't knock out some of your teeth along the way. I'll be waiting for your call. Where have you been? You think you can just disappear on me and come back whenever you want? I've just been trying to figure some things out, that's it. Oh, 
Well, why don't you go talk to your girlfriend about your problems? I don't have a girlfriend. I mean, you're the only one I want to be with. I think you're my girlfriend. I mean, I don't... You sound confused. Go get yourself a drink. It just ain't fair what they did to me. This world ain't fair. And you better get used to it. There ain't nothing fair about this town. I need to borrow your car. My car? For what? I got a chance. A second chance, really. It, it shot at the big time. What are you talking about, Archie? I can't tell you everything right now, but I need to find this white gal. <laughs> a white girl? When I was in lockup, it was this old black Joe. And I reckon he was some kind of actor or something. Because at nighttime, he would recite these plays. And I would close my eyes and imagine all the people and the places this old buzzard used to talk about. So when time come again and I'm free, I say I'm going to Hollywood to become an actor. That's my dream. And if finding this white gal for some old cracker is gonna get me closer to that dream, then damn it all. Damn it all. Who knows? I could become a star. <laughs> a star? <laughs> now I know you're dreaming. I'm just asking you, just to trust me a little bit. You are not the only one with their back against the wall. We all have hard choices that we have to make. I have to go. I know. You're chasing a girl when you have one standing in front of you. Nadine was a gossip hound. She knew who was sleeping with who, when, and where. People liked telling her secrets. I was hoping that someone had whispered in her ear about Mona. How'd you get in here? The gate was unlocked. I rang the bell, but no one answered. Who are you? I'm Thaddeus Quickstep. I'm with the Hollywood Negro Press, and I have some questions I want to ask you about an article I'm writing. An article? <laughs> Why didn't you say so? You said something about doing a story on me? A feature. A feature? Yes, um, we have some questions your fans would like to know. Go on. What's your favorite color? Pink, but that's too racy. So, let's just say yellow. What's your favorite flower? Roses, of course. Martini? No, oh, thank you. I never drink on a job. Shame. Who's your favorite actor to work with? I don't want to get in any trouble, so let's just say all of them. That's fine. So, tell us, what do you like to do on your uh, typical Friday night? Well, me and my girls like to go out. Hmm. Where? Over on Central Avenue, Dunbar Hotel. That place really swings. You've been seen with your gal pal. Mona Lane, tell us about you guys' friendship. I met Mona on a night out. She likes jazz, and so do I. So we hit it off fine. Mona Lane has not been seen out on the town lately. Do you happen to know where she is? Say, I thought this story was supposed to be about me. It is, Miss Lomax. We just have to answer questions for our readers. You're no reporter. 
Hey, didn't you used to work the door down at Dunbar? Okay. I'm gonna shoot it to you straight. I... Mona Lane's going missing. I've been hired to find her. Missing? We believe she's been kidnapped. Who's we? The studio. The studio hired a nigga to find a white girl. They think she's been kidnapped by a trumpet player that plays down on Central Ave. Thought you might knew something about it. You're kind of cute. I'll tell you what you want to know for a kiss. So, uh, this trumpet player, uh, what's his name? Tweet Jackson. That's his name. He from somewhere back east, but who the hell isn't in this town? That's all you know about him? Where does he live? You want to know more, Mr. Thaddeus Quickstep? You're going to have to meet me in my bedroom. so well. It's like he put a spell on a woman. He wasn't rid of a rough crowd though, so he plays like an angel, but he's still a nigga from the street. That all you got? Everybody want me to make them laugh and make them forget about their troubles, forget about their pain in life, but what about me? I need something too. I need to feel good too. like Jimmy Stans. He got a crush on Mona something bad. The studio set him up on a date just for publicity. And ever since then, he thinks Mona's really his girl. Why the hell he come here? He been looking all over town for her. Hey, Mona? I guess he finally made it here. The boy's in love, I guess. He must have really fallen for her. Mona? Hmm. I don't have the heart to tell him that it's not real. Well, you better tell him something before you knock your gate down. Please do something. Mona. Mona. Hey, where is she? Where's my Mona? I know you know where she is. She ain't here. I don't believe you. And you know what, boy? I'm not gonna leave until I find her. Suit yourself. I left Nadine's house no better off than when I came in. Strike one. I had aimed high and missed. Now it was time to aim low. Blackie Phillips was an old actor who came up through vaudeville. He played every type of song and dance you could think of. In his day, he had starred in over a dozen movies. But when his knees went bad and he couldn't dance no more, 
his Hollywood career was over. Now in his old age, he kept a quiet card game in the back of his house behind the kitchen. The only way I know to make some real money in this world is working on them trains. Being a porter, that's, that's good money. I'd rather be a porter in pictures than to be one. Them white boys want a man to bend over too much. <laughs> Hell, I've been in 15 pictures. But a bus boy, a shoe shine boy, a train porter, don't matter the part, I always say the same thing. Yes, sir, boss. You sure is right, boss. I don't know, whatever you say, boss. Hey, cut the shit, give me a car. I've been in all three Tarzan movies, and all I ever say is ooga booga booga. For me, I don't care. That monkey get more lines than I do, as long as they pay me at the end of the day. Yeah, just make sure they don't pay you in bananas. Cause you know, if they could, they would. Damn. <laughs> Must be exciting being in the pictures. You fellas get to be right there with the movie stars. Tell me, what is it like working with James Cackney? Cackney? Yeah, he's all right. I sold him some briefer once. Where'd you say you was from again? Just got off the bus from Walla Walla, Washington. Thought I'd see the ocean before I die. How'd you hear about our car game here? Somebody in Walla Walla must have a big mouth. Oh, fella I met named Tweet. Forgot his last name. Oh, Jackson, that's it. Tweet Jackson. Man say he played a horn. Told me about this here card game. Thought I'd try my luck. Yeah, well, your luck ain't so good today. <laughs> about this horn player, Tweet Jackson. You fellas know where to find him? You ask questions make people nervous. You sound like the police. Just that he owed me money from a pool game, that's all. That right. I beat him three games out of five. Last Tuesday, he owed me $23. That's a lie. Tweet Jackson was with me last Tuesday, all day. Then it must be Wednesday I'm thinking of, yeah. <laughs> Try again, mister. Oh, hell. I don't know what day it was. I just know the nigga owed me money. <laughs> Cut the bullshit, motherfucker. Who the fuck are you? And don't tell me no tale, because you might just get your face blown off. So you gonna move my face off? Let him go, Slick. I ain't never had no man killed here before, and I ain't gonna start now. I keep a nice, quiet card game. The last man got shot in my place was shot by me. Well, mister, you got some place to be in. I'd be getting there if I was you. I'll leave. I just need a question answered. Have you seen Tweet Jackson? You want something from me? This world turns off everybody getting a piece. I gotta eat too. Last time I seen Tweet, he was talking about making some money. Said he had to go meet some white bride. He was acting crazy. This white bride? You ever see her? Yeah, this one time she was in the car with him, saw him from across the street. She didn't get out. What's her? Yeah, that's her. Pretty as hell. Look like a movie star. What tweet stay at? I didn't say it enough. All right. He always with another horn player at the Cadillac Club playing pool. Horn player? What horn player? A nigga named Booker. He got a process and always wear yellow. A Cadillac club, huh? Yeah, that's all I know. Mr. Walla Walla? Mm-hmm. Your time is up. You got to go. See y'all in the funny papers. What tweet stay at? He always with another horn player at the Cadillac Club playing pool. What horn player? A nigga named Booker. He got a process and always wear yellow.
you following me for? Hey, I'm Archie Glass. Nigga, I don't know you. Yes, well, I'm with the Samuel Insurance Company. Insurance? Yes, I'm in charge of finding family members who have money coming to them from recently deceased relatives. What the hell are you talking about, man? I'm talking about a check. A check? Which I'm trying to put in the hands of one Tweet Jackson. You see, Mr. Jackson's aunt, Buttercup, has passed, and she left him some money from an insurance policy she took out. So you see, I'm trying to find Tweet Jackson. A check? How much? $300, to which I'm able to pay a finder's fee to anyone that can help me find Mr. Jackson. We're trying to get matters off our books. The sooner, the better. Oh, no. You don't look like no insurance man to me. Tell me where Mr. Jackson is, and you will receive a finder's fee of $5. Shit. I make more than that gigging at the Coconut Grove in one night. What's the name of that insurance company you say you work for? Archwell. Darmer, man. You lying motherfucker. Where can I find Tweet? I ain't no rat. You play horn, right? How you gonna play horn with a busted lip? Hey, hey! He doesn't walk up on Hoover Street. Over a liquor store. You can find him there. Mister. Hey, kid, you see the man that live in the apartment up there? No, but I see a lot of people go in and out of a garage in the back. Thanks, kid. Where is she? Where is she? Who are you talking about? Mona, damn it, where is she? You know, I asked around until somebody told me that she come here. Now why would she come here? Why would my Mona do that to me? Hmm? Look, man, I don't know nothing what you're talking about. But you should ask him. Who's he? I don't know, and he ain't talking. Now something's going on here, man. Something that somebody ain't telling me. You know, Mona's my girl, my girl, and I love her. And you better tell me where she is right now or you're gonna end up just as dead as he is. Better start talking, boy. You better start talking. <clears throat> Thanks, mister. Whew. You're lucky I'm nosy reporter. If I hadn't got Alina where Mona Lane likes to hang her stockings, you might be dead as Dillinger. A reporter, huh? Like for the paper? Skip Slater with the LA Trumpet. I'm stooping around trying to get a lead in a story. What kind of story? Listen, brother, I'm hip to what's going on. I may not know everything. But I know Mona Lane isn't in Mexico. And she hasn't been in her penthouse for the last three days. So where is she? Look, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told Liverboy here. I don't know. 
Huh. Well, who are you then? What are you doing here? I was hired to find Mona. Seems like we're all looking for the same person. Well, half of Hollywood knows she's got the hots for colored jazz players. If an idiot like this guy can figure it out, you know the rest of Tinseltown will soon be figuring it out too. I'm just trying to get ahead of the story, you know? Get the scoop. Looks like we all come to a dead end, huh? I know you're not telling me something. But if you change your mind, here's my number. Give me a call with some info, I'll make it worth your while. Hey, what about these two? Well, one's dead, the other's gonna come too in a few minutes. And I wouldn't be here when he does. Nadine said Mona liked to look at famous dead folk. I figure I had nothing to lose by killing an hour at the local cemetery where dead movie stars lay next to their fans. Mona? I don't know you. You are your glass? Maybe. Depends on who wants to know. Somebody wants to see you. Hey, I don't owe you fellas any money, do I? does not see you as a man. Hollywood does not see you as a man. That's why they call you boy and son. Tell you to bug out your eyes and stick your lips out. See, they don't think you have a heart or that you're intelligent. Or that your soul is the soul of God. Cut the sermon, preach. Why am I here? You are here because you are working for the enemy. I'm working for Jack Wingate. As I said, public enemy number one. What's all this about? I am the leader of the United Negro Movie Coalition. And we want you to, to join us. You got a hell of a way of recruiting a fella. Well, it's a rough world out there, Mr. Glass, and a man must meet force with force. There's a revolution going on. And every black man must stand up for himself. You cannot fight these Jim Crow laws in these streets being a buffoon on their movie screen. Come join us. They help us change Hollywood. How you gonna do that? You ain't nothing but a bunch of angry church folk. We have power. And if we boycott and organize, we can bring this town to its knees. Boycott? <laughs> Nobody's gonna do that. You a fool, preach? A uh, fool. Well, uh, sorry to hear you think so. What kind of black man are you? I'm not a black man. Just a man. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, I, I've already been circumcised. Every revolution needs some blood. I was getting nowhere fast. Time to check in with O'Neill. I gave him a call from a payphone at Pico and Olympic. Glass, where the hell you been? You were supposed to check in with me three hours ago. This ain't like going around a country club asking for a tennis partner. Watch your lip, boy. Don't call me, boy. I've had about enough of your mouth, boy. Oh. 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 
Oh. Now tell me what you got. Oh. Right now, nothing. Just a dead body and a whole bunch of people sticking guns and knives in my face. Well, that ain't enough. Let me remind you we're on a deadline. The tabloids are going to be on this in a day or so. Hey, that's another thing. I've been going around here knocking on people's doors with nothing to back me but just a smile. I need some protection. What the hell did you just say? I need a gun. As a white man, the last thing you ever wanted to do was give a nigga a gun. It was against everything he stood for. But Jack Wingate was on his ass just like he was on mine. Do you know how to use it? Hey, don't worry about me. Just be ready next time I call you. I headed south and east to Inglewood. I was on my way to see Ennis Matthews. about this place all the time at the club. It wasn't too hard to find. I'm sorry I pulled the pistol on you. I thought you were one of the neighbors coming calling. <laughs> what you doing in the dark, Ennis? Your lights don't work? They work fine. But I just keep them off just the same. That way they can't see inside. I've been having some troubles. What kind of troubles? When I bought this house, the man told me all about the wonderful, friendly neighbors. I reckon they ain't so friendly when a colored man moves in. I mean, I have rocks thrown through my window, mean letters put in my mailbox, and my wife just took my boys back to New Orleans after they killed the dog. So I bought this pistol. I saved every cent I had to buy this house. I'm looking for a girl, Ennis. Ain't none here. You heard of Mona Lane? She's been kidnapped by some trumpet playing Negro named Tweet Jackson. <laughs> what were you doing at Tweet's apartment today, Hannes? What are you talking about? You're the only Negro I know that can afford to smoke these fancy Cuban cigars. You're crazy. Plenty of folks smoke them. Yeah, but that pistol you got in your hand is missing a bullet. And I bet it's the same bullet that was in that dead body I found today. broke as soon as I bought this house the studio cut my contract tell me what happened some folks came to see me said uh they needed someone to pick her up she knew me from the studio they needed someone that she would feel comfortable with. They said it would be big money when it was over. So I took her over to the apartment on Hoover. Tweet's apartment. When we got there, Tweet was missing. There was an argument about what to do next. Someone pulled a gun, I had mine. Fire first. When I got up, Mona was gone. I just, I just hauled ass out of there. Who hired you? It don't matter. Hurt you? They beat me. Man. When I was a boy in New Orleans, there was this restaurant that all the white folks would go. It was 
real nice, Archie. I mean, real nice. Had candles on the, on the table, man. It was fancy. Fancy pictures on the wall. They had this man that stood at the door, like, with a brown paper bag. He'd hold it up. And if you were darker than the bag, you couldn't get in. I promised myself I get into that place. But now I know that no matter how rich or famous I get, Tell me what happened. I can help. You can't help me, aren't you? Can't nobody help. And there's no. Ennis was somebody I looked up to. Truth was, I, I wanted to be just like him. Whatever secret he had, he took with him to hell. I thought about Ennis's neighbors having to wash the blood off his walls, but it didn't make me feel any better. talking to this girl at the bar last night, skinny girl from Alabama. She had all these glasses and hair in a little bun like a little poodle. I was waiting for her to bark so I could buy her a drink. Then I remembered I had a bone in my pocket. That's a cheap date out here in California. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's gonna be all right. I'm just trying to be somebody. Be a good man. You are a good man, Archie. It's just, you're chasing a dream. When the best thing in life is right in front of you. It's gotta go to work. You're having a rough time here, young buck. You know about the three seats of power in this country? It's three. You got Wall Street, controls the money. You got the White House, controls the military. And you got those who control our images. You know who controls the image? Hollywood. That's who controls your image, young buck. My man, Archie Glass. <laughs> How Hollywood treating you, baby? Not good. But I'm still on my feet. You? Man, you know me, just gigging around. I was up in San Francisco last week. Tomorrow down in San Diego, trying to stay two steps ahead of that devil. Well, you better stay the hell away from me, because he's nipping at my ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Archie, I heard you looking for Mona Lane. Yeah? What about it? Man, I saw her in the back room, and she is messed up. At least it looks that way. Archie Glass. She was a dead ringer for Mona. I know she has something to do with all this. 
<laughs> a lot of people think I look like her. Where is she? Try to kill me. Who? Oh. I don't know his name. Just some fella I met last week at the Hi-Hat bar. He wasn't as good looking as you, Daddy. What'd he say? So we were going to his friend's place. Score some junk. What happened when you got there? There's nobody there. <laughs> no friend, no junk. Then he took a gun out and tried to shoot me. I bit him on the hand and got out of there. This man that tried to kill you, where does he live? He took me in a house. Venice. This is the water. Yeah, it had red shutters and a round window on the front door. Like a ship. What you want, mister? Evening, brother. I'm Deacon Love, child, from the most holy First Baptist Church of Compton. Sorry to bother you. I know you must have been helping yourself to some dinner, but I want to talk to you about the Lord Jehovah. I don't know nothing about that. I just want to save your soul, brother. My soul don't need no saving, but yours might if you don't get off my porch. Perhaps it'd be better if I talk to the lady of the house. Perhaps if you don't get the hell out of here before you get hurt? O'Neill, it's me. Glass, damn it, where the hell have you been? Shut up and listen. I'm standing across the street from my house in Venice on Pacific Avenue. I think Mona's on the inside. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. But I tried to get a look on the inside. I didn't see much. You better get down here now before they leave. Don't let them out of your sight. I don't care what Wingate may have promised you. If you let them get away, I will bust you up bad. I'll put you under the jail. Hello? Archie? Archie, is that you? I just want to say I'm sorry, Sandra. Mm -hmm. I should have had done right by you. Mm -hmm. Archie. Yeah. You never told me what you went to jail for. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. Tell me. I killed the man. The truth is, I was just a dumb nigga in the wrong place at the wrong time. But that's not important. Tell me what's important. Making it, baby. Mm -hmm. Seeing myself on the screen. Mm -hmm. I want people to see me. If I can't do that, then mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. another dumb nigga.
I knew that sent somebody. What they offer you? I can't believe it. I didn't think I would ever find you. You'll be back in your penthouse in no time with all your Hollywood friends. Nobody will ever know this happened. You get to go home, I get to be back in the movies. That's right. I'm an actor. 
Nothing like you, but who knows? Maybe someday, someday. Hey, if I were you, I would be celebrating. Celebrating what? You killed him. You killed Tweet. Wingate said you were kidnapped. He showed me the letter. He showed you a letter. You like to pretend to be other people. Me too. Growing up in Kansas, we were just poor white trash. I would dream about getting away. Guess that's how I wound up here. But this town, it ain't right. They wanted to use me and cut me up into a million pieces. But Tweed, he was somehow different. He was the first Negro, the first man to treat me good. You and Tweet were together this whole time? We tried to keep it a secret, but I knew it wouldn't be long before the studio found out, so we decided to run away. You were gonna run away from being a movie star? <laughs> Crazy, huh? All your hopes and dreams. I guess your dreams don't mean much if you got nobody to share them with. <sighs> we were gonna take the money and go someplace where it didn't matter who we were. It was Tweet's idea to fake the kidnapping. <laughs> Make it look real so that Wingate would pay the ransom. <laughs> Steady sent you. That's right. I used you to get to her. And I would do it again if I had to. You see, when you sign a contract with a studio, we own you. The studio decides what color your hair is. The studio decides what movies you make. And the studio decides who you're seen with in public. All to sell the people, all American image. And America is not ready for a movie star who's married to a nigger. You lied to me and told me she was in some kind of trouble. She was in trouble. And I saved her. You saved her. From a life of despair and disgrace. I don't like being lied to. What difference does it make whether you knew the truth or not? You came to me, remember? You want her to be a star. Well, now you can. And don't worry, Mr. Glass. I intend to keep my promise to you. For your remarkable service to me. You've earned a part in one of my films. And it's Ramona. She allowed herself to be dragged through the mud. I'll clean her up. Oh, and just in case you're uh, getting any ideas of changing the terms of our agreement, forget it. If I'm willing to do this to her, just think what I'd be willing to do to you.
I knew when I punched Jack Wingate, I would never work as an actor in this town again. It didn't matter. There were plenty of others left to play Sambos in the movies. Not me. There's no place in this town that I won't be able to find you. I own you. I created Mona Lane. You were nothing but a freckle-faced farm girl when you came to me. You go ahead and run, but I'll be right behind you. Okay. Yeah. Ain't the first time I got my ass kicked. You really love Tweet, huh? And you heard him play. Of course I loved him. Where are you gonna take me? Out of this damn town. The next train to Kansas City leaves in half an hour. What will you do? Stay here, I guess. I got no other place to go. My real name's Mary Hayden. Your last picture. It was a real ride. Thank you so much. Hey, Mona, where you been? Everybody's been looking for you. Hey, oh, come on, Mona. What's the big deal? What, hey. what? A nigger? You've been sleeping with a nigger, Mona? So let me get one more. Jimmy! Play. Jimmy, calm down. Tell me to calm down. You've been sleeping with a nigger? Horn player!
Dad, Dad, I love you, but you think of yourself as a black man. And I, I think of myself as a man. Don't.